Well, the United Nations Refugee Agency is warning that an influx of refugees into Uganda is straining already limited resources. More than 52,000 people have crossed into the East African country since fighting broke out in South Sudan in early July. And the refugee crisis is also impacting the United Kingdom. Some members of the British Parliament are calling on authorities to speed up the resettlement of unaccompanied children as new figures show the whereabouts of thousands of young people is unknown. Now, in January this year, 55% of irregular migrants arrived in the EU were women and minors. 85,000 unaccompanied minors applied for asylum in the EU in 2015. That's three times as many as in 2014. Now, Europol estimates that uh, 10,000 unaccompanied minors have gone missing since arriving in Europe. Well, uh, Keith Vaz is a member of parliament in the UK and the chair of the Home Affairs Select Committee. And he joins us now from London. Uh, Keith Vaz, really good to speak to you here on TRT World. So the government set these targets, 20,000. It was a low target and they've got nowhere near it. They haven't. And although progress has been made, I'm afraid it's painfully slow. It's not a huge number, but it's a commitment that has been made by David Cameron. And what we'd like to see is more local authorities, more local councils in the United Kingdom taking families of Syrian refugees. Most of them have taken none. Some, the big cities like Leicester, London and Coventry and Nottingham, have taken quite a few. But we're not going to reach this target of 20,000 unless they do much more. So the report highlights this concern and we want to make sure that this happens as quickly as possible. And before we uh, focus more on the UK, Keith, this has also been a bit of a failing across Europe, hasn't it? Oh, it's a huge problem. Uh, the European Union has uh, failed to deal with this colossal uh, migration crisis its response has been lamentable. I should say that we do owe a debt of gratitude to Turkey and the Turkish authorities for the way in which they have worked with the European Union. The deal that has been negotiated with Turkey is extremely important. And my committee, which has been both to Turkey and to Greece over the years, knows that a huge amount of pressure on Turkey and Greece because of illegal migration prior to the current migration crisis. And therefore, what we need to do is to work with Turkey to make sure that the deal is successful and that, the stem, and that we stem the flow of the huge numbers, over a million people who have entered the EU over the last year and a half. Uh, and Keith, you know, your committee does sterling work, but of course it is a committee. You talk about these things. What's happened to this one-for-one -one deal that was set up? Why aren't these things happening? There was a trickle of them when it was first announced and it seems to have gone quiet again. What's going on? What can you, make, what can you do to make sure that people start uh, living up to their promises? Well, they ought to live up to their promises. An important deal was struck with Turkey, which was reported to the House of Commons by David Cameron, in which people were being returned to Turkey. I would like resources to be given to Turkey to allow them to prevent boats leaving in the first place, which I think would be the proper answer. But this is a good deal, and therefore it needs to be implemented in all its aspects. We have a very large Turkish population in uh, the United Kingdom who have come to this country and made a huge contribution. They have come here because they have been able to uh, access the arrangements that have been made. And I think that we need to continue to press on the EU, which has been very, very slow in giving uh, proper commitments to the work that has been done and ensuring that what they promised is being fulfilled. Otherwise, we're going to have a further crisis as the years go on. This crisis is going to go on for 10 years or more unless we take a grip of it. And that means the EU, the richest group of countries in the world, has got to do much more. Uh, uh, Keith, I'm, uh, I don't think I'm being rude in saying you've been around the political bloc for a while now. What do you put down the EU's reluctance to, uh, to stand up for their deal, for, to offer the visa-free travel for Turks that was promised as part of this agreement? I've absolutely no idea. I think it is 
bizarre having struck this very important deal, which primarily, of course, helps Greece, because Greece is uh, the frontline state with Turkey. We're dealing with a country that is a member of NATO, that has candidate status for the EU. I was actually the Minister for Europe when Tony Blair initially announced that he wanted to see Turkey in the EU. Everyone keeps talking about it. So we're dealing with a very friendly country here. And we need to be able to work with them to fulfill the promises that have been made. And EU commissioners, the president of the EU, should actually be traveling to Ankara, meeting with um, the Turkish president, to make sure that this deal is put in place. Because if it doesn't, it's going to be disastrous not just for Turkey, because you'd have to uh, have to police this, but also for the whole of the European Union. It just has to happen. Absolutely. And All the promises need to be kept. Absolutely. And finally and quickly, if you will, uh, uh, Mr. Vaz, uh, where do we go from here? You've done the sterling work of this report, but uh, as I said, these are words. How do you make these uh, turn into action? Well, we made these recommendations. It's now up to government to respond to, respond to what the committee has said. But we intend to keep monitoring the situation over the next few months. It will not just go away because we published this report. And I hope with the committee to come and visit Turkey and see all this for ourselves in the near future. OK, well, uh, Keith Vaz there from London, Keith Vaz MP, thank you very much for joining us here on TRT World.